Come on, y'all ready? We're going to wrap this series up, Ancient Wells. Before we get started, can we welcome our Colleen Campus and all those that are joining us on live stream? Just let them know how much we love them. This has been an awesome series, a series that God is directing us to, yes, keep moving forward. Yes, keep being innovative and relevant and, and doing new things. But let's not forget about the things of old that God has put in place that we still can draw from today. He had told Isaac when, he, when Isaac was taking back the land that the enemy had stolen from his father, he said, now I want you to go redig your father's wells. And not only did Isaac redig up those old wells, but he restored their names. And I believe the Holy Spirit is wanting us as a church family to restore some of these ancient wells that the church for far too long has either tried to cover or ignore or hope they never boil up. We want them to overflow in our lives. We looked at the first week and then all the way through Wednesday night we tied the series in on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We want those to be active and relevant in our life and in our culture. And then we looked at the three deepest wells that there are that we could draw from, and that is faith, hope, and love. It's the only three things from this earth that we take with us to heaven. Everything else will pass away, but those three go with us on to heaven in eternity forever with our God. And last week, we talked about redigging that ancient well of wisdom. It seems like the world's losing their common sense. Nobody's thinking, everybody's reacting, and what an opportunity we have as the church, as the light of God, as the ambassadors of Christ. What an opportunity we have to be a source of wisdom in a time where it seems like it's missing big time in our society. So today, I want to wrap it up with this last part. I want to talk to you about something that each and every single one of us need. Every single one of us, we need this in our life. I believe you all want it. You look for it. You search for it. But today, I'm believing God by His grace that you will see the revelation of not only what it is, but why you should have it, and then go and get it, because we're going to talk about how to do that. But this, I believe, is needed for today just as much as anything else is. We live in a day today where chaos and strife reign. Our nation's being torn apart by political views and by, by socialistic views and by different understandings of which way this should go and which way that should go. And, and we are focusing, not us as a church, but us as a nation, we're focusing more on what divides us instead of what unites us. And that really is the image of what the whole world looks like today. It's happening in Europe and Africa and Asia, it's all over the place. The difference is, for so long, for 200 plus years, America has stood as one nation under God, right? United and indivisible. So what's happening today that's allowing all of this to happen is we're missing one of these ancient wells that God has given us, that the Holy Spirit will produce through our lives, and that we are in great need every day of our life, and that is peace. I'm not talking about no hippie peace. I'm talking about peace deep down in your soul. Peace that you can lay your head down on your pillow at night and not have nightmares or worry about the nightmares that are coming. Peace that doesn't cause you to, to, to fear going to the store because you might get in an accident. Peace that doesn't make you worry about whether or not your marriage is going to make it. Peace that helps you to understand that your kids are going to be all right. Peace that passes all human understanding. The peace of God is different from any other peace. It's not just the deuces, right? It's more than that. It means so much, and we all need it. And we all should be pursuing it. And we all should be wanting it to live abundantly in our life. Because where peace is, Fear can't live. Worry can't take a, take a boat. Where peace is, we don't have to fret. Where peace is, we don't have to argue. We don't have to fight. Where peace is, everybody gets along. 
That's the hippie piece coming into it now. There's this lady, she had been through some rough stuff in life, through a couple broken relationships, just seemed like she couldn't find the right guy. And she began to, to venture off into submission work and into, into trying to, to help in the Middle East. And one day she was just so overwhelmed with all that was going on in the world, all the chaos and fighting and the wars and all the insta- instability. And, and she's walking along the beach one day and she comes across this old, ancient-looking bottle. She picks up the bottle, she brushes the dust off of it, and all of a sudden, poof, a genie pops out. And she says, are you the kind of genie that gives me three wishes? He said, not today. There's too much going on in the world, lady. You got one wish. What will it be? And she said, hold on a second. She went in her, her bag and she pulled out a map. And she said, I want peace in the Middle East. See all these countries on the map? And the, the, the genie's looking at it and saying, yeah, lady, do you understand that those nations have been at war for thousands upon thousands of years? Yeah, yeah, but you asked me for a wish, and that's my wish. And he said, I'm sorry, lady, I don't think I can pull that off. Make another wish. She said, okay. All right, I want a man that will love me unconditionally, that will help with the dishes, that will help cooking. He won't like sports. I want a man that would just listen to all of my problems. I want a man that doesn't care about any hobbies or anything like that, that all of his interest is just in me. And the genie said, lady, give me that piece of paper back. Give me that map back. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? She wanted, she wanted peace. She ain't getting it, but then she got it because she wanted something that was probably more impossible than peace. We should all desire peace. Peace within our soul. Let God and then the military worry about the world. Let us worry about us, right? Here's, here's what I want to show you. Let me, let me actually read from Mark chapter 4. I'm going to start it off, and we'll pick it up here in a minute on the screen. As evening came, Jesus says to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus into the boat and they started out, leaving the crowds behind and followed by many other boats. So there's a lot of people, a lot of boats out here in this lake. But soon a fierce storm came up. How many of y'all been through a fierce storm in your life? High waves were breaking in. They were crashing into the boat and the boats began to fill with water. That sounds like a scary situation. Jesus was sleeping. He wasn't worried. He was in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're all going to die? And then Jesus woke. And watch what happens now. When Jesus woke, he rebuked the winds and he said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there's a great calm. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Where's your faith? And they were filled with great fear. They are already afraid, now they're even more afraid, not because of the storm, but because they just saw who they kind of wanted to believe was the Son of God, but weren't quite sure, just get up and literally stop a massive storm in its tracks. And they said, who is this man that even the wind and the sea obey him? This isn't a parable. This is an actual event that took place in the life of Jesus. If he could stand up in a boat with many other boats around him in the midst of a fierce storm, and he could speak three words, peace, be still, and everything changes. What can he do for the storm that's in your life? How quickly can he calm it? How quickly can he take away the fear and the worry and and bring stability and assurance that everything is going to be all right? The first word he spoke, peace. Be still. He commanded the winds and the waves to stop in their tracks 
And he can command the same thing within your life if you're willing to let him. Watch this now. Here's what peace is. I'm big on why, what, and how. The, the what in this case is also the why. Why do you need peace? Because of what it is. It's a state of tranquility. Exempt from the rage and chaos. you imagine a life that's exempt from rage and chaos? This is the biblical definition of what peace is. Exempt. You don't have to. No more road, road rage, Chris. Right? No more chaos. No more arguing. No more, no more fear. No more worry. No more of any of that. Not that we won't experience that or be tempted to experience that, but it's what we do with it that matters. And so what I want to show you today is really how to obtain peace. Because God tells us very clearly in his word exactly how to get it. And it's amazing. Look at this now. Number one, how to get peace. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't worry. That's hard enough for many of us. Don't worry. But then it gets even harder about anything. Not just don't worry about that. No, don't worry about this. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Watch us now. Then, condition. So peace comes with a condition. And the condition means that you have a part to play in being able to receive that peace that God wants to give you. God can't give you peace if you are doing nothing but worrying and being afraid. So when you stop worrying and being afraid and you pray about it instead of fret about it, that's when God begins to move in your life with peace. Then you will. Not maybe, not might, not halfway, not 90%. You will experience. Experience. It's not a thought. It's not just an epiphany. Peace is an experience of God. You will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can humanly understand. His peace, it will guard your hearts. You remember what the Bible says about above all else? Guard your heart. Above everything you do in life, guard your heart. Above everything you want to do in life, guard your heart. Above everything you believe you're going to do in life, guard your heart. About every good thing and, and bad thing that's coming your way, guard your heart. How do you guard your heart? You guard your heart with the peace of God. His peace will guard your hearts. And remember how you guard your heart? You guard your mind. His peace guards your mind. As you live in Christ Jesus. So I believe that everybody sitting here today and watching online would say this, that you would want to live a life where you experience peace that passes human understanding. That you would want to live a life where your hearts and your mind, your spirit and your soul are guarded by God, by His peace where you don't have to be working overtime and blowing fuses to try to protect your heart and mind. No, because God's doing it for you. But how is he doing it for you? How do we arrive at this destination? How do we arrive where we just experience God's peace in such a way that it passes our human understanding and that it guards our hearts and our minds? He tells us right before it. Don't worry about anything. Step one. Step two, pray about everything. Step three, tell God what you need. Don't tell your neighbor, don't tell your spouse, don't tell your friend, don't tell, you tell God what you need. And number four, watch this now, thank him for what he has already done. You thank him. So having an attitude of thankfulness. So what does that mean? Because most times when we need peace, we're not very thankful. We're focusing on what the devil's doing instead of what God's doing. We're focusing on what we don't have instead of what we do have. 
Remember we talked about our nation is being torn apart because we're focusing on what we disagree on instead of what we do agree on. It's negative, stinking thinking. Tell God what you need. Thank him for what he's done. So it's really a four-step process. I don't got to worry. I got to stop worrying about anything. Instead, I just got to pray about everything. And then I got to just tell God what I need and thank him for what he's already done. And then his peace is going to come. And I know what some of you are all thinking. The first part says don't worry about anything. And you're like, yeah, right, come on. How do I do that? All right, preacher, you got all the answers? That's how I get peace? Well, tell me how to stop worrying. Thank you for asking. Because God already gives us this in his word, how to get rid of worry. Watch this now. 1 Peter 5, 7, give. You don't have to get, you don't have to obtain, you got to give. The King James says, cast all your worries and cares to God. You got to just put it on him. I read in the Greek what this means, and it means this. It means literally to load somebody up with. You ever been in a meeting and somebody just vomits on you with words? Like you didn't even know it was coming? You get in a meeting, and all of a sudden, they're just like, I just can't stand my life. I hate everything about this world, and right now, this whole, and they just blah, 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 and you feel like you need a bath when it's all said and done. You know what they're doing? They're unloading. They're unpacking all of their worries and their cares to you. They'll never get peace that way, and if you're doing it, neither will you. But when you unpack, when you unload, when you, when you load up like, like a saddle on a horse, when you load up like, 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 like old school cowboy movies, when, when you load up the gold across the back of the donkey to, to, to go your way, you load God up. You know why? Because he can handle it. You want to know also why? Watch this. Because he cares about you. That's the God we serve. He cares. The devil's main trick is to tell you he doesn't care. Why bother God with all this little stuff? You should have bigger faith than you have. Where's your faith at? How come you're not? Where's your hope? All this stuff starts going on in your mind. And then you feel like you're a nuisance to God. That you're a bother to God. That God's not worried about you. He doesn't care about these things. But he said, give all, every single one. I remember when we first planted the church, my personal cell phone number was the church hotline. And I got a call five in the morning. I'm an early bird, but this was like after a Wednesday night service, five in the morning. I'm like, I look at the phone. It's one of the church members. I answer the phone. Thank God we have offices now. I answer the phone, and I said, what's going on, man? He said, Pastor, you need to pray for me. You probably don't know what I'm going to do. He's just freaking out. He's got little kids. He's got, I'm just thinking, what happened? He said, our dog got out. We don't know where it is. Can you please pray? He comes home. I was like, brother, I'm going to smack you. The next time I see you, call me at five in the morning to ask me to pray for your dog that went missing. That's got where'd he go? Oh, he's somewhere in the neighborhood. We just don't know where. I'm like, yeah. God bless you, bro. I gotta go. You can't give your worries to somebody else. You can't give your cares to somebody else, and they're gonna handle it. It's only God. Now, you could come into a relationship and partnership with people and stand in faith and believe for those things like we have been doing together for my wife, Melissa, but, but you can't give the worry or the care to others. you got to give it to God. Are you all here? You want peace? Watch this now. 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus over every single person that's here today and those that are watching online. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. That's his heart. The Lord, God, wants to give you 
peace himself. He wants to give it to you at all times and in every way. That's the God we serve. That's the Father you have. And that peace is readily available for each and every single one. But you have to do your part. Don't worry. Don't take it on yourself. Don't put it on others. Instead, pray about it. Tell God what you need. Thank him for what he's already done. And then get ready. Because you're going to be standing on the tracks and the freight train of pieces are coming. Are you listening? You are going to receive peace because God is a God of his word. And his word is yes and it's amen. Amen? Can we give him one big one? Just thank him for that word. I'm going to ask you just a moment if we can bow our heads and close our eyes. So many today are searching for this peace. Let's redig up that old well. Let's not get stuck in society's way of dealing with stress and worry. Let's go to the source who can provide a peace that passes all human ability, all human understanding. I know what it was like in my life before Christ. I had no peace, no peace in my heart. And because I had no peace in my heart, I really had no peace in my life. I pushed through and put on the game face at times. But I was at war constantly in my own heart. I was at war with all the things that had taken place in my life, all the things that others had done to me, the things I have done to others. I was at war. I was in conflict. The day that I met Jesus, a peace came on me. I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know the scriptures. But the way that I described it to my first pastor was this. It was indescribable. I I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I couldn't understand it. But I was experiencing this peace. And he said to me, son, you know that scripture? I said, no. And he quoted Philippians 4, 6 through 7 to me. And I remember I just sat there with tears in my eyes knowing, God, you are a God of your word. You do it exactly like you write it. Today he wants that for all of us. But for some of you, you're lacking major peace because you don't know where your heart is. Your heart's not guarded. Your heart's not yet been filled with the love of God, with the abode of God. God wants to live on the inside of you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He, he displayed his love in a, in a grand way by hanging his own son on the cross of Calvary. Not to remain there, but to then be resurrected. So through that resurrection power, you could be resurrected on the inside, that your spirit could come alive, that you could come in to a relationship with God. Be forgiven of everything you've ever done wrong. That's his promise. That's his invitation. And he's here today knocking to the door of your heart. He just wants in. Will you let him in? For those of you that do not know that you know in your heart that you're where you want to be, where you need to be in your relationship with God through Christ, then on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand up Nice and high in the air. We're going to pray a prayer right there where you sit. Without fear, without worry. On three, put it up nice and high. One, two, hands already going up. Three, come on, let me see them nice and high. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So many hands, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So many hands. Thank you, guys. Thank you. For everyone that raised their hand, just place it right on your heart. That's where Jesus is about to enter. We're going to pray this prayer together. And I'm going to ask everybody here, let's all join in and back them up as they make this their salvation prayer. Let's say it where own two ears can hear and say, Jesus, I believe in you. You are the Son of God. You gave your life for me. Now I give my life to you. Forgive me. Fill me with your peace 
with your love from everything that's ever been done to me and everything that I've ever done. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. From this day forward, I dedicate my life to you. Give me your strength and your Holy Spirit to live it for you. Amen. Can we give those folks one big huge congratulations? Greatest decision you made ever. For Melissa and I both, we love you. We're praying for you. Thank you for praying for us. Tyler's going to come give you some info on how to take those next steps. Well, can we appreciate Pastor Chris and that message today. It's so great. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer with him or this is your first time here with us today, go ahead and find that Connect card that's in the seat back pocket in front of you. Do us a favor and fill out the bottom portion of that, tear it off, and drop it in the offering bucket as it comes by. We just want to connect with you and help you take the crucial next steps in your faith and your walk with, with Jesus. We want to come alongside you. We'll send you one letter in the mail to invite you to take that next step. We won't show up at your door, harass you, anything like that. We just want to come alongside you and partner with you and help you take your next step in your walk with Jesus. At this point in today's service, we're going to take up our tithes and offering. There's four ways that you can give here at Reach Church. You can give online at reachchurch.com. You can give with the envelope in the seat back pocket in front of you. You can text to give the number that's on that screen to any available keyword, or you can give in the giving center in the lobby. And maybe as Pastor Chris was talking about peace today, if you don't have peace when it comes to your finances, my encouragement is to do what he instructed us to do, what the Bible tells us. Don't worry about it. Pray. Thank God for what he's already done. Our encouragement every week, no matter how you give, the foundation is the same, that God loves a cheerful giver. And our encouragement is always to, to pray. Ask God what he would have you do. Ask him what your next step is when it comes to your finances and be obedient. Don't just give. The Bible is very clear that we're not to put pressure on people or manipulate people in this way. So that's not what we're about. Our encouragement each week is that you would pray. Ask God what he would have you do and be obedient to his voice. So I'm going to pray for it. I encourage you to pray with me. The ushers will receive it during the video announcements and I'll be back up to close you guys out. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to invest in your kingdom. I thank you, Father, that for every cheerful giver that's in this room. God, I pray your blessing and your peace upon them. I pray that you would bring it back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, church family. We are so excited to introduce this season of 21 Days of Devotion. This will take place August 12th through September 2nd. We encourage you to take extra time during this season to draw closer to God through prayer, worship, fasting, or however God leads you. Our hope and prayer is that our church family will deepen our relationship with God both corporately and individually. Every morning, one of our pastors or leaders will give a devotion on the Reach Church Facebook page. Catch it live in the morning or anytime throughout the day. For more information, be sure to check out reachchurch.com slash 21 days. My name is Ashley, and this is my story. I didn't have as close of a relationship with God that I would have liked to have had. I realized, you know, I was, I was bound in chains. I was bound in addiction. And as much as I wanted it gone, for some reason, I couldn't get past it. And I got asked to come to this class, and it forever changed my life. Going through freedom, I was able to become free. I learned that I was holding on to years and years of things that I've just repressed and pushed to the side. God was able to lead me out of addictions. I was able to become free from those, never looking back. And after that, I just felt this peace. There was this steadiness. He took all of that away and gave me true freedom. Thanks again so much for joining us this morning. If you have a prayer need in your life, please don't go anywhere. Our prayer partners will be down front. Or if you'd like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit or learn more about that, our prayer team will be down here waiting on you. Let me speak a blessing over you, and then we'll be out. In Jesus' name, I declare God's favor in your life. I declare his best and his blessing in your faith, your family, your finances, and your future. I declare the peace of God to walk with you for all of your days. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. We love you guys. We'll see you Wednesday night or next weekend. God bless.
pray You leave the 99 for me You paint the sky with promises of your grace So I will find my way to you Don't 